Hi y'all, this is Larry from Deep South Texas. It's uh, the beginning of September and a lot of the garden is uh, setting idle, getting ready to uh, plant the fall crop. But there are still some very exciting things happening in the garden here at Deep South Texas. Let's take a look. And the first thing I'm excited about is my banana tree. It's got a flower. And it is a huge flower. Longer than my arm. Anyway, I've been watching this flower. I just saw it less than a week ago. It was just poking its way out of the top of the tree there. And then uh, two days ago, it grew so large, it fell and bent over. And now it looks like this. Now this is about uh, two and a half months earlier than my first flower showed up last year. And we did, uh, we did get some bananas off of that plant. And I'll try to put a clip in here of those bananas. But uh, I don't think they got to full maturity because the bananas were very, very small. And we had a, a frost that kind of uh, did the plant in, even though the uh, bananas continued to mature. But uh, this year, I'm hoping to get some bigger bananas. We'll find out. These are dwarf Cavanaugh banana trees. We'll find out if that means that the, the trees are dwarf or that the bananas are dwarf. <laughs> this year, we hope to get some larger bananas. So here's where I have uh, hung up my bananas to uh, see if they'll ripen up. Let's uh, cut one off and see how it's doing. Now, it's not very big. The other two banana trees haven't produced any flowers yet, but uh, hopefully they will soon. And the aloe vera, it's doing great. Lots of uh, new aloe vera plants coming up this year. Another exciting thing going on in the garden are red ripper peas. These were red ripper peas grown from the seed I got from Deep South Homestead. And they are growing well. They haven't flowered yet but I think it'll be any day now. I have had an attack of aphids. Now, one of my, uh, one of my viewers asked me a couple weeks ago about how I control aphids, and I said, well, I really haven't had any problem with aphids, but now I do. And uh, I don't know if they're gonna show up on here, but I've got kind of an aphid problem on these Red Ripper peas. So I've mixed up, oh, about a gallon of water, a couple teaspoons of dish soap, and uh, a couple teaspoons of cooking oil. And I've been out spraying them. It's, uh, it's not a magic bullet, but it seems to be helping. So I will continue on. I think the aphids will be much less of a problem once uh, the plants get a little bit older. So I've just been using this, uh, this sprayer over here. I'll keep spraying them in hopes that uh, I can handle that problem. I also have some speckled butter beans, the seeds uh, which were sent to me by Deep South Homestead. And they're, uh, they're doing, doing well. They're not nearly as uh, large or vigorous as the Red Rippers, but uh, you know, they look happy. I'm sure they're going to produce as well. And it's time for me to do my second Moringa leaf harvest of the year. I want to get that done before the uh, plants start producing pods because I don't really want pods. I want the leaves. And uh, 
it looks like I got a lot of leaves coming on. And I'm going to try another experiment here in the garden at Deep South Texas. I've got a couple empty beds here and I've got some potatoes that are telling me that uh, they want to start growing. So I'm going to uh, plant a couple beds of, of potatoes and uh, see how they do. I think it's too hot. I'm not really expecting a lot, but um, these are potatoes that I grew this spring. So I think uh, there's a shot to be okay. And I'm going to plant them in these two beds. I've, I've cut them into, into uh, plantable pieces about three days ago and they've skinned over pretty well. Let's get started on that. So I have about uh, six ounces of triple 13 fertilizer. I'm going to uh, sprinkle this on top of this raised bed. Now I have my cultivator here. I'm going to dig that into the soil. Oh, I don't know, about three inches deep. Maybe a little bit more. So I have that fertilizer all worked in. Now I'm just going to try to rake it out so it's flat. I've laid my potatoes out into three rows and in each row the potatoes are about eight inches apart. A lot of the potatoes have little sprouts coming out of them already. And I like to put my potatoes pretty deep in the ground. Six to eight inches if I can. And, and the main reason is I won't ever be hilling these potatoes up. So I get them uh, as deep as I can and then actually once I get them planted I'll come back and uh, throw a bag of miracle Grow garden soil over the top of the bed to try to raise it up a little bit more. So I fertilized with that uh, six ounces of uh, triple 13 and then the miracle Grow garden soil has a little bit of fertilizer in it as well. But that'll be the only fertilizer these potatoes get. Okay, potatoes are planted, put a little bit of garden soil on top, we'll see how we do. Now, this is just an experiment. This is uh, September 9th. I usually don't plant potatoes until the last week of December, first week of January, but I had the space available, potatoes were sprouting, so I thought I'd give it a try. I'm not recommending this, right? <laughs> So follow along these potatoes, if they grow, you know, should be ready sometime in the middle of December. So we'll, we'll take a look at it then and see if this was a successful experiment or if it was a horrible failure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it that big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.